Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a Divine Masculine reading. I wasn't going to do a reading today because I've just been so sleep deprived. And then, I, you know, you I took a nap and I woke up and it was just like, whoa, I felt like I was on another planet. Um, I get very, very, very disoriented after naps. I have to do a lot of exercises to ground myself and I'm still not really there. But I, I woke up really, really triggered and I thought, you know, I think this is like an extremely triggering time. I'm playing some sacral chakra cleansing music because I feel like um, there's a lot of sacral energy going on. It's very, making me very uncomfortable. Let me know what's happening for you guys, okay? It's actually um, kind of low. So I want to do this. I haven't been wanting to use my singing bowl because of my baby, but um, this is to set an intention to keep my sacral clear of any energy and your whatever chakras. My dog, um, I think she stayed sleeping through that. Okay, she's such a little sweetie. She sleeps so much. Okay, so, um, it's actually my Divine Masculine's birthday weekend, but I have, you know, it's like, I was thinking if he knew how little I think about him at this point, you know, I'm here because this is what I do. This is the journey I've been on, but I'm very detached personally. Um, but it is his birthday weekend. So I guess um, maybe he's energetically trying to communicate to me. I don't know. Um, I haven't been in contact with him for a long time, but um, so, you know, Personally, I've just been kind of going through this thing where it's like clearing out the old, you know, like a lot of relationships and things that reflect a version of me that I don't feel like reflects me anymore. And so let me know if that's been happening for you guys. Yeah, we've got the blade cutting stuff out. Okay. Redefining ourselves, rebuilding ourselves here. Um, like Queen of Swords energy where it's like we... You know, I've been really consciously trying not to apologize lately, like use the word I'm sorry, which is so ironic because my masculine, when I first laid in bed with him, I kept elbowing him because there wasn't a lot of space and he kept saying, stop saying you're sorry. And I feel like he kind of didn't respect me because of that. And I've had a conversation recently with someone about how much we just constantly apologize to, you know, I think there's multiple reasons. I think we do it because you know, especially as feminines, you don't hear masculines constantly saying, I'm sorry. We're apologizing for who we are. We're apologizing for taking up space in the world. We're also trying to be perceived as easygoing and flexible. And I feel like that's kind of an energy we need to let go of, okay? We need to stop wanting to be perceived a certain way. And I think that's what I've been being triggered about is like, you know what? If there's people that don't like me or whatever their issue is with me, because, you know, I face a lot of rejection stuff and it's no longer even about my masculine because if anything I feel my masculine deep down cared but I'm constantly being revisited with the rejection wound and it's like you know what if being me makes them not like me and it means I have to feel bad about who I am I'm not going to because I love me despite any struggles I've been through despite any hurdles I still have to go through despite any flaws I feel I have, I feel like, are you going to change for someone? Do you really want to change who you are? Or do you like yourself? Because I love myself. And so if that makes others mad, if who I am and owning my power makes others mad, then they just have to leave because I like me and I don't want to apologize anymore for being me. So that could be an energy that's coming up. You are invited to draw your blade and use it. It is not auspicious to hesitate, to waste time in idle talk, or to hide from the inevitable. Heaven and earth are aligned to support you in claiming your power, so take decisive action. Overcome your fear of hurting others, unsheath the blade, and use it wisely. It's time to put down the sword and place it in its scabbard. Do not offer your blade in service to toxic emotions. You will be faced with an even more disagreeable future with the people or situations you are attempting to banish. Put the blade to rest until your inner fire has mellowed. These are two different... The blade represents sharpness of the body, mind, and spirit. Pointing upward, it summons the power of heaven. When aimed down to the ground, it anchors the power of the heavens on earth. The blade can be a healing tool or a weapon. 
Then use your blade with an impeccable intention to cut the energetic cords that are tying you to the drama at hand, okay? So I do a lot of meditations where I imagine myself like on a boat with a bunch of oars and I'm cutting each one and each one represents a part of me or someone from the past. So what this message is kind of saying, it's like knowing when to cut someone out or to cut out the energy around a situation, okay? So let me get another card of clarity about that. But um, when it comes to, you know, the divine masculine, this is an energetic cord that really can't be cut. But what could be cut is the drama attached to it, the negative stories around it, the ways that it's kept us hindered, you know? We've got the drum. So this to me is like listening to the beat of your heart. Can you feel the beat within my heart? Can you feel the love of the, 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 with that beat in my heart? So no, so no. I don't know where that song just came from. The drum invites you to take the next bold step in your journey. The forces of heaven and earth are aligned behind you, supporting effort, effortless action. This is not a time to push against the river. The current will take you exactly where you want to go. Once you jump in, collect your power tools and summon your courage. You travel to the beat of a different drum. It's time to acknowledge you do not fit a mold or role or relationship that is not in tune with you. Find your rhythm, respond to the heartbeat of the distant drum. So these are kind of like opposing messages, I feel, because I'm looking for this deck that's coming to mind, but it's not right in front of me. Um, one of them is saying kind of knowing when to cut ties and knowing when not to cut ties. And the other one is saying, you know, stop... Um, Stop trying to make yourself small. Stop trying to um, do these things to appease or, you know, um, to not make waves. I can't find the deck that I'm wanting to use. But um, let's get from the Element Oracle. All right. So you guys know that I make a lot of these readings about the Divine Feminine as well. When I get into the tarot, I'll get more into the masculine. Got pressure and bravery. Yeah, this is the second courage thing. So what is it that you're afraid of? What is it that you're not doing? Um, and how much are you doing because you feel pressured? Life is so short. We have this one life to live, guys. And if any of the disasters in the world are teaching you anything, it's just to honor what your soul is calling you to do, to listen to that beat in your heart. Okay? and um follow and be courageous enough to follow that okay there's leaves falling out of here i don't know if that means anything some of you guys might be wanting to literally go into the woods or something like with nature okay but we need to take this step and we can't ever expect masculines to have courage and bravery if we don't do it in our own lives here this is from the divine feminine oh my god the deck that i was looking for is literally right in front of me it's work your light Okay, so let's see what the Divine Feminine deck has to say here. The mystic of divine love. Love is divine and I am nothing except love. Okay, so when we focus on love, that expands. When we focus on fear, that expands. The high priestess, I am one with my soul and my soul is a legacy of love. So we have to follow what we love now. We have to follow our soul's calling. We have to love ourselves. That is first and foremost, okay? The high priestess is here and the mystic of divine love. These are both very mystical energies. This is very spiritual energies. These are very quiet energies where we don't have to like make a scene. We don't have to explain to anyone. We just quietly, you can go your own way. That's that's the theme of this reading. Go your own way. You can call it. Oh, that's what I wanted to bring up. So there were many people that led me to my divine masculine. And one of them has not been on my radar for years. And I came across something online. I was looking for someone else. I saw something with him. And I'm like, wow, I'm still really connected to him. What's I don't know. It's really weird. So I've been feeling just nostalgic about other people on my journey. Play, have fun, celebrate, don't be so serious, share your voice, come out of the cave, persecution and expression. So we just have to, you know, I was at the dentist this week and she was telling me she wants to start a YouTube and um, I just, it just, just came to me just now, you know, we have to just come out of our shells here. A lot of what I say here is very channeled, 
sometimes I'm like just blabbering. I don't feel like I'm saying anything. And then it's like glue. You guys see something and it's like other people are going to hear your message even when you're not getting it through. So just have fun sharing your voice. Come out of your shell, okay? Do what you're afraid to do here. Dance with life. Do something to change your energy, okay? So um, whatever that looks like, okay? It doesn't have to be extreme. It could even mean I just got this message of eating like more high vibrational foods like fruit. <laughs> that just came to me. Like bringing colors into your, um, into your, I was going to say your appetite, your, um, your nutrition. I don't know. <laughs> I'm glad that you guys accept me and love me as I am. If you're new, I'm a little bit off kilter today. So it's just, I don't know. What's the, what's the planetary actions? I'm just very sleep deprived and I've got my own stuff going on. So I'm pulling from the sinking wasteland tarot. Where's the masculine at? You know, what was the feelings I was getting when I was tapping into the masculine? You know, last night I was laying in bed and I was like, I feel really bad for my masculine because I feel they're very lonely. I feel that they surround themselves with a very shallow life and it keeps them maybe preoccupied and busy for a little bit, but they're just so lonely. And it's like, yes, the feminine would be their ideal best friend, but they're not, they don't have the courage to have that kind of dynamic, okay? So I actually just put these upside down. I'm going to do mental, emotional, and physical of the masculine. I've got the Sinking Wasteland Tarot, and I'm going to use the Spirit of Darkness and Light for Mystic Moon. And I'm making three piles here for thinking, feeling, and physical situation. And you know what? I'm going to use Messages of Love from All Things Intuitive to elaborate. So I'm going to have three cards in each pile. Thinking, feeling and physical situation a little less conversation a little more I, I don't know where these songs are coming from okay smile have fun be free yay love life don't joy dance with life be free yay feel the sunshine on your face even if you're in a cold place it's been such a crazy time but i have a good good friend in austin and the weather's you know, the situation's just been awful there, and I'm praying for you guys. <sighs> Sending my love. I've been on the phone with him all week. You know, I don't talk to anyone. No one, I don't have time for anything, but I, there's certain people who have walked through the fire with you, and so remember those people too. All right, so we've got thinking. This, I've been getting seven of wands. I've been having dreams. Seven of wands all week. Gosh, the masculines are so defended and they're fighting for something and there's something about needing their voice to be heard. We've got fertility, sex, and spring and that's what I'm telling you guys. I had to do that sacral like sacral music because they are just thinking about sex so much right now. Then we have go slow, take time to get to know each other. So they're trying to maybe meditate. They're trying to maybe calm themselves down. They have a lot of activated energy and I feel like that's just what's going on in the collective. They're going slow with maybe decisions when it comes to the feminine, their energy when it comes to the situation, okay? What are they feeling? We've got soulmate. Your soulmate loves, accepts, and respects you unconditionally. That's what I'm saying. No matter what your masculine has put you through, that's the only person I feel other than my parents. My family, maybe a couple close friends. My masculine actually really loves me and he's been really obnoxious to me on the 3D, but I know that he loves and accepts me. And there's nothing to even strive for anymore there because it's like, I know it doesn't matter. We may not even be together. We may not even talk again, but I know there's love there, okay? So we've got the emotion space is soulmate. And you guys, when I talk about my situation, I'm really far removed, but I'm using this as a way to convey to you that your masculine, if you don't feel they genuinely love you, then that's not your masculine. We've got six of wands and then the spirit of Gaia, mother earth, family, and creation. And so I feel that they are wanting to come in and, you know, be with the feminine. They want like a 3D relationship here. They want to manifest something with their soulmate. They want to make this less of just a soul connection. They want to manifest in their hearts into something successful, something they can feel good about. There is still an ego situation tied to this, though. That's how I see Six of Wands. It's very much like they also could feel like you're with someone else, and they're like, now they want to prove that you're theirs, okay? 
So what's, th what's their physical situation? Chemistry, the attraction you feel is mutual. They're definitely like getting off to the feminine right now. That's for sure. Six of cups. And I thought when I saw the six of wands, I'm like, no, no, no. I'm feeling a six of cups energy. This is nostalgia. This is a soulmate situation. This is kindred spirits. This is reconciliation. Okay. So they have this on their mind and they want to have a reunion with the feminine spirit of the cat, fanciful, curious, independent. Okay. So let's get some overall energies about that. I'm using the tarot of sexual magic, the overall energy for the masculine spirits guides ancestors please keep my energy very grounded and clear as i pull this tarot of sexual magic card keep my sacral out of this <laughs> i'm just using this deck because it's really good with the storytelling we've got knife knave of wands which is page of wands and three of swords yeah so um they feel like something in their spirit kind of died like there's like you know they settled with whoever they're with they got stuck in this situation the hangman is here and they're just kind of like you know it's like the world's smallest violin but we have like this um uh, what is it accordion or whatever here with the three of swords they're just like mourning over the feminine they're mourning over what could have been that new beginning that fresh new possibility that was there and they feel like they didn't make the moves they didn't do what they had to do they made the wrong decisions and now they're regretting it okay i'm gonna pull for my love game let's start a love game a love game abandonment wounds forgiveness and family. This is the second thing about family, okay? Now, there's a lot of ways to interpret this because we have the spirit of Gaia, Mother Earth, family, and creation. Um, there was abandonment wounds from their family. There was mother wounds that I feel they had. And that's what they have come to realize. There's something within them why they rejected the feminine. And it comes down to forgiving their mother, forgiving themselves, and the feminine forgiving them because it wasn't personal. It was something that originated in the home that they were raised in. It was something in their family of origin. Okay? So that's their mirror that they're starting to realize. It's the mother wounds here. Okay, they have mother wounds and they projected that onto the feminine because the feminine was very nurturing to them. And it was just like at that right time, at that right place where the feminine played that role for them. Okay, so a lot of what people do to you is their projection of their own issues. It's never personal. If you trigger a lot in people, the human design is a really good psychological tool to see. You might be someone that is like, a projector where people project easily onto you. That's my situation. And so it, relationships have to kind of be short lived or people will ver get very much into thinking me is them. And it's like a projector literally where all of their stuff is on this blank canvas, which is me. And they attribute those qualities to me, but really they're coming from within them. Okay. And so this was just the timing of that was supposed to happen because they were also supposed to trigger wounds in you to evolve on your journey. And I think the feminine clung and it was like that push and pull energy with the abandoned wounds. The more she clung, the more they wanted to run. There's a book called Love the One it's by Herbert something. It's Love the One you were with or so I don't know, but it's all about how relationships are always between the person who has the wounds of like avoidance and the person that has the clingy wounds and how people think that those don't work, but those are actually the ones that are meant to be for both people to resolve those issues. And so my masculine once said to me, oh, I chose this one karmic because um, sh her and I do our own thing because we're both independent. And I'm thinking I'm the most independent freaking person I know. I've done everything alone in my life. This is independent, cat curious. But he projected this clinginess on me because he was bringing it out of me because he was pushing me away and I was latching on energetically because he was pushing me away. And so there's a lot of energy with any dynamic when we're on this journey of people who 
we're always playing this energetic dance and we're like, we're reacting to other people's energies, but that doesn't mean that's who we are. They're triggering something within us, okay? So this is from Hannah from my soul tribe. I'm just going to pull a couple cards. This is from Divine Feminine Align. What, what are some messages for the Divine Feminine here? Release fearlessly. That's like the third card about fearless, okay? The karmic taught me how to stand up for myself. You guys, that's what the seven of wands is. Okay, so they're realizing that they're learning to stand up for themselves through this karmic situation. It is time for a media detox. Okay, you not only are you picking up energy, but you're, you're exposing yourself to energy through media. Like even if you're not looking, you're exposing other people to, you're like a portal where people are tapping into your energy. I see the twin flame journey as a gift to further explore my soul. We have to remain in gratitude, guys, because that's what it is, okay? We've got to detox. We've got to let go of these toxic things. We've got to live fear fearlessly, and we have to be even appreciative for the karmic and whatever they're teaching, the masculine. All right, so we're going to do a deeper truth here. I'm so grateful for this journey and everything it brought me to through the tears, through the struggles, through the pain, through the wounds that continuously get triggered i know that it's opening me up to more light in my soul and my heart more healing more peace more independence more freedom from any self-limiting fears or beliefs i am open to expansion i am open to growth i am open to living fearlessly and to living to the beat of my own drum and not letting others dictate how i feel how i think what moves i make how i live how big or small I live. I don't let others impact my state of being. I live courageously. I show up in my life and I feel alive and free to do whatever feels right for me. I am courageous. I am bold. I am fearless. I am happy and joyful and I dance with life and I embrace life and life loves me and I love life no matter what it feels like. Everything is going to be amazing. I have full faith and I trust and I surrender to this beautiful, amazing path before me. All right, guys, that's your reading. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.